Okay, so we're going to uh, hop back up on the bike here. We're going to leave this uh, this branch of uh, Polly Creek uh, behind. So Polly Creek empties into Polly Lake, as you can imagine, which is uh, kind of one of the uh, numerous lakes in the area here. Uh, the gentleman that we just saw drive by on his uh, all-terrain vehicle, uh, I, I've basically seen that guy, um, don't know his name, uh, I've seen that guy so many times. Um, we've seen him three weeks in a row. Uh, so we saw him uh, two weeks ago when we were by Hogarth. Um, I saw him last week um, over by Cameron Falls. Obviously we saw him today. Uh, I've seen him a bunch of times in the past. So he I, I must be a trapper or something like that. Um, Cause he's, it seems like he's always back and forth on this. I saw him two years ago when I was doing this section the first time. So um, yeah, he uh, must be a, a trapper or something and, and working his lines or something because he's obviously through the area all the time. Okay, so uh, back uh, in the saddle here. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to work our way towards the next big culvert, which is across another branch of uh, Polly Creek. So here you can see the grade is doing all these kind of, you can see all these curves that we just went through. Uh, very interesting con in, in terms of the construction of the railway in this area, lots of curves, and it's gonna culminate in a really interesting one. Um, so I'll, I'll flash up a little map here. Uh, I'll show you a topographic map and you can kind of see all the, the curves that the, 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 the grade goes through. So I'm guessing, and it's one of the things I love to do, I love to sort of get into the head of, of you know, the engineers and the people that laid out the railway line uh, is, you know, what was, the, what was the reason for all of this? And obviously it had likely had something to do with try to mitigate grades uh, because essentially you're climbing um, from Nipigon, which is at the level of Lake Superior. So, you know, 600 and something feet above sea level. Right, and then you head up into, um, you know, so where was Nipigon on the original line, uh, mile post 78, you know, and you go to the, uh, you know, you go to, to uh, Beardmore, okay, so Beardmore is on the original line, Beardmore was uh, mile post uh, 21, right, so you're, you're going 50, 55 miles, um, you're climbing uh, like 400 feet. Um, and, and so uh, I'm guessing that all of these curves uh, that they put in uh, were designed to try to offset the, uh, the, the, um, the, the elevation change. Sorry, just let me stop here for a second. So back there, there was, we missed a, there was a bunch of pieces of telegraph pole. We're gonna see another one coming up here. Sorry, I was too engrossed in my story. So anyway, so uh, we'll come back to that topographic map um, when, we, uh, when we get to the, 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 the angle, as I call it. Uh, and that, that's coming up in a little bit here. Again, just kind of a pretty area here. Again, you're up on these uh, up on these embankments. Um, again, uh, from what I understand, uh, very very the, the grade for the most part looks okay in the, in these, some of these spots, but uh, very problematic underneath with a lot of uh, um, um, issues with the subsoil, right? That um, not particularly. Uh, um, not particularly uh, strengthened. So we passed, uh, I was busy yapping probably, I passed, mile, passed where mile post 112 uh, was supposed to be. Um, we looked and we looked and we looked and we didn't see that mile post marker. Uh, so coming up here, you can see it opens up a little bit. 
Uh, you can see there's still some uh, some poplars here with some leaves on them. Looks uh, still looks kind of pretty here with all the yellow. Uh, so we do have a, a major culvert here uh, on a pretty high embankment. You can see there's quite a quite a curve to it as well. So again, this is just part of all of this curving uh, for the uh, for the grades. Um, and uh, so you can see the creek down there. So this is a uh, uh, this is a branch of Pauly Creek. Uh, there is a milepost marker on here. And so 112.25. So again, that is the mileage on the Kinghorn. So for the original lines, uh, we have to subtract the 49.7. So that would be 62.25. So uh, we're gonna go down and take a look at this. Now, I don't really feel like going down there because you can see how far down it is. So we're up on a pretty darn high embankment. Uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna reuse uh, our footage from 2020. Uh, and uh, where we basically uh, go and have a look at the uh, uh, the culvert down here. All right, so we're down here below the level of the grade. We are about 60 feet down uh, the side of this embankment. And so what you can see here is you can see the, uh, the culvert that carries the water here of this branch of what is known as Pauly Creek. Uh, you can see there's still a considerable amount of water that's flowing through here. You can see it's an older style uh, concrete culvert uh, might be hard to see. I want to see if I can get a little closer here. So what's happened, you can see there's some repair work that's been done. You can see that there's a metal culvert that's been um, placed inside the culvert inside the, the uh, concrete one. Uh, you could see these metal reinforcement rods. So there's been a lot of work that's been done to this, uh, to this culvert over the years, obviously because there's been damage and erosion to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump the grade and see what's uh, over on the north side. Okay, so we're down here on the more northern side of the grade, if you wanna call it that. Uh, and so here you can see this uh, side of the culvert. A um, little bit less action here. It doesn't look as, uh, as deteriorated. Uh, you can see that there's a very big pile of brush here that's accumulated at the uh, opening of the culvert. And that's probably just uh, natural movement of water and debris starting to pile up. Trying to see, it looks like it was one of those metal rods that's on the top of the culvert here. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if I can get any closer. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna work our way back up to the grade and we're gonna keep pu pushing our way uh, to the south toward McCaskill Station. Okay, back in the saddle, leaving Polly Creek behind here as we start to curve. And so what's gonna happen is we're just gonna curve and we're gonna start running basically due south. And that's why I'm kind of worried about the sun kind of popping out here because that could play havoc with our uh, with our video here. And so again, this is uh, uh, very uh, indicative of the uh, uh, of the nature of the construction of the line here. And uh, we're going to uh, we're going to see. Um, at the bottom end of this southerly run, what happens with uh, what happens with the line? Kind of interesting. Um, we uh, we'll we'll point out a few telegraph poles here as we're uh, uh, as we're kind of running south. Uh, this section here. Um, you, you see some telegraph poles, but they're all kind of like picked over and then you get to the next section uh, You know that uh, you know uh, uh, on the Cameron Falls station side um, You see the telegraph poles, but they're they're Lots of them are full insulators, right? It's uh, it's just kind of one of those weird sort of things. Oh great So the Sun has decided that it's gonna Sort of poke out here so i'm going to try to keep my head down a little bit so 
try to minimize the glare. The sun's a bit diffused, uh, obviously, because there's there's some high cloud. So hopefully the shadows won't be too much of an issue. Here you can see again how they've pushed back all the brush. I doubt that's going to happen, continue to happen in the future with uh, the, the road being impassable uh, a little further forward. So here you can see the uh, an example of one of the telegraph poles. And so you'll probably notice that there's probably nothing on it. Yeah, it's been like picked. Even, even the Dominion 42s are gone. All right. And usually nobody wants those. All right. So. I think we got a bunch of curves to go through, but we're not quite heading south here. Just trying to keep an eye on my GPS, see if I got something. Oh, there's the partridge. We've seen lots today. All right, let's uh, let's move you along a little bit here. All right, so here uh, we're coming up to our next point of interest. So as you can see, uh, we have a milepost marker. Oh man, it feels like I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Perfect timing. Phew. So, uh, we have the milepost 113 marker. So this is the only milepost marker that I know of uh, on this section of, uh, of the grade. Uh, so again, the 113 is the mileage on the Kinghorn. So for the original lines, uh, what we have to do is subtract the 49.7 miles. So that becomes milepost 63.3. Okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, take a quick little stop here and uh, we'll uh, resume our journey. I think we're going to start uh, making our turn to the, to the south. 